नमस्कार आई एम देवदीप पुरकायस्था फ्रॉम इंडियन इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ टेक्नोलॉजी बॉम्बे वेलकम टू माय कोर्स बिजनेस फंडामेंटल्स फॉर एंटरप्रेन्योर्स दिस इज मॉड्यूल 21 एंड हियर आई विल टॉक अबाउट स्टार्टिंग अप ए न्यू टेक्नोलॉजी वेंचर बट बिफोर आई गेट इनटू द मॉड्यूल इटसेल्फ लेट्स लुक at the flow of the course and you can see on the screen the topics for weeks 9 to 12 coming to the module i will share with you what is a startup and how what startups different from a small business a small or a micro business i'll then talk about what are the types of startups and how do if you want to do a startup discover a market or a customer problem i will then share in brief about startup methodology because they're very clear methodologies versus a classical let's say an mba kind of a methodology or skill set and then i'll talk about how do you create a startup business model Let's start with what is a startup. As the name kind of suggests, a startup is a very early stage business. Maybe the first three months, six months, twelve months, eighteen months, and then we'll come to the legal definition in a while. But is the first few months or first few years of a new technology, which is trying to solve. a customer problem which has never been solved before or not been solved the way they want to solve it or the way the startup will use a novel technology to solve it we we'll look at a lot of examples in a while typically startups will be based on a technology and typically this technologies will be cutting edge emerging very advanced technologies again we we'll look at examples in a while some of the other features are that startups because they're trying to do something which no other company has done before the risk are very high the failure rates are very high because they are going somewhere which other companies have not gone before or they're applying technologies in way that it has never been used before startups also because they start from a small base need to scale up very fast because if they don't scale up very fast they'll probably not survive so high risk novelty scaling up and a lot of agility or very fast moving very quick moving very quick adaptation versus a large traditional company all companies all large company the largest company that you can think of today was at some point in time a startup so for example a company like procter and gamble which i worked for for many years today it's a very large established well known stable company but at some point in time in the early 19th century because png is almost 170 80 years old company it was a startup started by mr proctor and mr gamble it was a startup so if you look at any of these companies coca cola or any of the tata companies godrej companies ford as a motor company these were all startups started up by their founders but over time they grew they matured and they become what is called traditional businesses large traditional businesses so just to reiterate what are the characteristics of a startup obviously innovation today's innovation may be very different from the innovations of the 1830s when maybe a company like procter and gamble started and they made the first candle or they made the first soap 
So at that point in time, in the 1830s, around that time, candle and soap were innovation. But that's not the innovation today. But whichever area it starts, whichever time it starts, 1800s, 1900s, 1950s, 60s, 70s, Google when it started, around the year 2000, Facebook when it started, or Ola or Uber, all of these companies when they started did something new. So innovation is a characteristic. Scalability. A traditional small business like a Kirana store or a salon or a restaurant, and we'll see examples of that later on, a traditional small business will probably not be very scalable. But startups will be looking at market segments and technologies which can be scaled very fast. Fast as in hundreds of millions of users. Fast as in maybe a billion users. Think Facebook, think Amazon, which are also startups. Maybe 15, 20, 30 years back. But today they have millions and billions of users. So scalability. Risk and uncertainty, because it's so new, it could fail. Startups have a failure rate anywhere up to 95%, maybe more than that. Because they're trying to do something which is not proven. So risk is very high. It's also lean. It's lean because at the early days of a company, maybe the founders are the only employees, are the only people working in that startup. And therefore, it's a very lean structure, which means very few people. But because it's very few people, they can do many different things, new things, very quickly. And they can adjust and adapt. And then, because they have to scale very fast, they need funding. And they need funding in various different ways. And we'll talk about that. Some startups need funding very early. These are deep tech startups. We're doing a lot of deep tech research. And some startups need funding on a milestone basis. But many startups, and today, for example, the AI startup, OpenAI, Chat GPT, because they're scaling very fast, they're going for almost no users to millions of users, to hundreds of millions of users, and maybe a billion users very quickly, the need for funding is very high because they have to invest in technology, creating the, increasing the technology base, supporting the large user base, marketing, etc. Versus a traditional company which will probably grow steadily at 10, 20%, maybe even 30%. A startup may grow at 100%. 200%. If they may double in a day and again double the next day. So these are the characteristics of a startup. So let's look at types of small businesses. Not all small businesses are startups. Very few small businesses are actually startups. So small businesses in India, for example, they're classified as micro, small, medium enterprises, and they are called MSME. Startups are also micro businesses when they start. Then they become small business. Then they grow into a medium business, and someday it becomes a very large business. Like Make My Trip, Book My Show. They're very large businesses today, Flipkart, but they all started small. So we've got MSME, which is a traditional business, small business. We'll look at the characteristic in a while. And then you've got a couple of kinds of startups. One startup is which has identified a market need and tries to solve it and then grow as they solve the problem for more and more people. That's called a market pull startup. And then there are some startups, typically in an academic institute like IIT or MIT or Stanford or any of those top-notch engineering colleges or pure fundamental research colleges, they may take a very, very deep tech, which has taken years 
to develop and then push it out on, in the market. For example, vaccines, the mRNA vaccines. It took years to develop, but when COVID came, it got pushed out to the market very fast. So these are technology push startups. Let's deep dive into each of these kinds of business. And remember, for you, you don't necessarily have to do a technology startup. I would encourage all of you to start up. But if you're not a technology student, if you're not an engineering student, but an arts or commerce or a humanities student, you can still do a startup. It may not be called a startup, but it'll still be a micro business which will grow to small, medium, and then grow. It could be in the area of performing arts, singing, or dancing, or art, or some sort of service. So before I get in deep dive into technology startups, let's have a look at normal MSMEs. In India and most countries, there's actually a lot of focus on MSMEs because MSMEs contribute hugely to the country's economy. The contribution of MSME to a country's economy can be 30 or 40 percent. It could be 30 or 40 percent of the exports of that country. So MSMEs are very important for the country. And I encourage all of you to start a business, whether you call it a startup or you call it a micro business, growing into a small and medium business, you can still start up. I encourage all of you to start up. This is from the website of the Ministry of MSME, which is part of the government of India. I encourage all of you to visit this website and look at some of the content. I'm going to share some of it now. So by definition, and this is by definition by the government of India, <laughs> classification happens for micro, small, and medium, depending on invest, investments and in revenues. All businesses need some infrastructure, need some machinery, need some setup to function. And depending on that size, and you can see the numbers there, a micro business will typically have investments of up to a crore and a turnover of up to five crores. Once it crosses that, it's no longer micro. By the government definition, it becomes a small, then it becomes to a medium. And as you can see on the screen, as long as you have investments below 50 crores, and turnovers below 250 crores, you still qualify as a medium enterprise. Beyond that, you become a large enterprise. And I hope all of you can go in that journey. I also strongly recommend that you go through this report because the government is encouraging a lot of our students and working professionals and aspiring entrepreneurs to start businesses, create jobs. There are a lot of government schemes. There's a lot of areas of government support. And I suggest that if you go through that website or the ministry report, you can actually see what is the support you can get from the government. And in a country as large as India, the opportunities are very high. So let's look at some of the numbers. So you can see the numbers on the screen, and this is from the government website. You'll see that we have more than six crore MSME enterprises, six crores. Half of them, I'm talking approximate numbers, are in the rural side. Half of them are in urban areas, like cities or metros or big towns. You can also see the classification or the breakup of MSMEs into different categories, especially into manufacturing, trading, and just providing services. So next time, when you go out in your own city, in your own town, do watch out for businesses. 
It could be a trading business. It could be a retail business. It could be a small manufacturing unit making handicrafts or food processes or flowers or fisher. We'll look at some examples in a while. But look out for businesses all around you. And in my very first module, I talk about what's a business, what's a company, different kind of companies. Here we're talking about how do you classify businesses and what happens if you start your own business and get on a startup journey. So as I said, take a three minute reflection break and look around your neighborhood, look around your town, look around where you are on a journey and try and identify three or four MSMEs. They're all around you. And try and figure out what businesses do they do and try to estimate what their annual turnovers are or annual investments are, how many employees do they have. And as you keep doing some of these reflections, you will become better equipped to think about your own startup. So please reflect for three minutes.